This is Travis of Elston Equine Solution. It's partnered with Klopp and Cattle Company. And as you can tell, I'm not a performance guy. I'm just a working cowboy and a clinician. And you can tell I'm dressed to the nines here. You know, just all nice and fashionable. So anyhow, all jokes aside, what we're talking about right now is uh, part two of the step of hobbling, okay? So part two is basically get done first with the one leg strap, followed by part two, which is sideline hobble, okay? Right now I'm using a, a good sideline hobble. It's got a seat belt type material in the center and uh, it's pretty good material here. It's riveted in, you notice it doesn't have buckles. I don't like buckles when I'm putting uh, hobbles on a horse. I've seen people lose their fingers trying to put these on the horse moves or you're sitting there running out of time and you're trying to fasten the buckles this is real simple real easy it comes in okay this one here is uh is actually made i believe by clinton anderson and uh i'm just gonna hold my comment on that this is good uh good stuff right here it's a uh, good material here i've used it for years and i really like it okay uh, and I'll show you another one later on. I'll make one make a video showing you how to make one Out of cotton rope three strand to put between these. Okay, and I've used that one for years And I'm saving that because I'm gonna make one to show you how to do it So that way you're not spending a hundred dollars 200 close up to two hundred dollars on a set of sideline hobbles Okay All right, with no further ado. We're going to demonstrate step two of hobbling putting on the sideline. All right Thank mm -hmm. you. putting these on I'm gonna talk about why I like them uh, one thing is with sideline hobbles they're a lot better than traditional hobbles of time being up the front the ones up the front horses learn sometimes learn to hop skip and jump with them on like a jackrabbit and they can really take off with some steam with sideline hobbles when I'm grazing them out in the, the wilderness or flat area what I will be doing is I'll put these on and they can't outrun you because when they try to take a step forward with the front leg the back leg's got to fall and really slows it down so that's one reason i really like this sideline hobble second reason i like this sideline hobble is uh is those kickers okay i put these on uh, the front leg and the back leg you know you can put them on and uh they go to kick the front end goes out from them so they really learn that through warm pressure not to kick anymore okay now i was up at uh a horse place up chaparral new mexico and uh was trying to do some farrier work and uh that horse just liked to kick a lot so i went ahead and put these on there and boy after he was done with these he did pop the rivet that's how bad he was kicking but he learned just to stand there i could pick up the, the front feet do them and i got to where i could work with the back feet and actually do some farrier work so these work out really really well I like them a lot, okay? Uh, and they just work fantastic. If you want to put a saddle on, whatever you want to do, these side law and hobbles are the way to go, my personal opinion, okay? So, it's a gimme here that you've already been able to pick up all the hooves, okay? You're able to uh, pick up the front leg, easy. <clears throat> You're able to pick up the back leg pretty easily, okay? That should be a given, okay? I highly recommend if you're just an average horseman, okay, not uh, <clears throat> somebody that's been training a lot of horses or anything, I'd recommend you do that first, to get all your groundwork in first before you put sideline hobbles on. If you've done plenty of groundwork, they're not gonna struggle as much, all right? Now, the first thing I like to do is I like to put the lead rope right around the back end of myself. So if the horse does go to kick, I can automatically 
do this number and move those hips away from me, okay? I can move them hips away from me. So I always put the rope over towards me. I know his nose is always pointed my direction, okay? Now, the only thing with your rope hanging down, make sure you're not stepping on it and getting in big trouble, getting tangled up in it. All right, so what I like to do first is always put these hobbles on with the buckle to the outside, okay? So I'm gonna prep it, got it open. I'm gonna come back here, rub down, and I'm just gonna put it right around the pasture and bone of the animal. And then what I like to do, it's a lot easier, I'll take the back hind and I'll bring it towards the front, creating space. Now typically these ropes are an average horse, 24 inches in between, okay? Now I got the buckle once again towards me. I'm going to rub down the leg, place it on. And I'm just going to pick it up, let him know he has it on. Now you got to remember, I've already done stage one, and I'm right here at a nice 45 degree angle of the horse, okay? I've already taught this horse how to lead by the feet, okay? Now if you haven't checked my, out my video of how to lead a horse by its hooves, whether it be the front hooves or the back hooves, check it out because that's stage one stage one teach them how to lead by the front feet and the hind feet stage two the one leg hobble stage three is a sideline hobble what we're doing right now stage four what i like to do is a three-way hobble and then stage four go ahead and work on the front part of the legs putting a traditional hobbles on and we'll talk about the different types of front hobbles out there in a later video stage five is how to fix a horse that is leaping away with front hobbles on. So we're gonna go over all that stuff in this series of videos, okay? So right now, I have the hobble, sideline hobbles on this horse. Now, when they're on this side, what I'm gonna do is only untrack this side of the hind quarters. I'm just gonna untrack the hind quarters. If I go around and do the other side, he's gonna step over and get tangled. So I tried to help my horse out by not doing that. I'm going to gather up my lead rope here, and I'm just going to have him walk around with it. I'm on track nine quarters. He feels it on there. He's not really having no problem with it, okay? Then I might have him come forward a little bit. And I'm at this nice little 45 degree pocket so he doesn't jump into me, okay? And have him come forward. Good boy. So he can learn after a while, because you are supporting him, that he can graze with them on. Real easy like. And we'll do a video of him grazing with these on out there, okay? So I really like this a lot. Now a lot of times what I do is I just play with them. Let him know he doesn't have to freak out. I'll just sack him out a little bit. I'm not gonna sack him out where he's so unfeeling though. Because I like a little bit of life in these horses. Just enough to get the point across. Now it doesn't matter what tool you use, just as long that you get them comfortable. Okay? Now I got my cow whip here. You see my video on cow whips? I really like using them, they're a great tool. They definitely get a horse used to the sound of a cow whip. So I might just take this over top. Do the same thing. You can use a stick and string if you want. Some people call it a carriage stick, I guess. Okay? I'm going to make some noise with it. I'm just trying to make sure that he is comfortable all the way around. And see, I got plenty of distance right here, so I'm not going to get jumped in on it. Okay? I know my Eve moving around. He's doing fine. Okay? Now I might crack the cow whip. I'm gonna get my 45 degree angle. If he jumps, he's not gonna be able to hit me because he's got sideline hobbles. Okay? And he's doing great. He's doing fine. Okay? So once he passes this stage and everything, easy pleasy, I'm just gonna switch switch legs. And I'll show you how I like to take them off here. OK, 
Okay, boy. <clears throat> Okay, what I like to do to take them off is I do a reverse cycle. So whatever leg I put on first, okay, it's gonna be dead last in this occasion, okay? So I'm just going to reverse order it. Still got hold, I can bring it forward if I want. You can help me out and just take it off. Now you can see if you went to kick, trying to take a buckle off would be a pain. Okay, what I do is I rub the legs, let them know that that's the cue that I'm taking them off, okay? Real easy, like. Sideline hobble, if you've done your homework, it's pretty easy to teach to a horse. Okay, so I rubbed his legs. Now I'm gonna let them know that, hey, you can go ahead and follow me now. See, he knows they're off right now, and I just switched eyes on him, okay? And he's easy pleasy. Real simple like, okay? Now what we're gonna do is put it on a different side. Go over the same technique, so no matter what you do, whatever you do on one side, you do it to the other. Okay, so what we're gonna do I'm just going to rub, rub, rub to the back. And if they move a lot like that, sometimes what I'll do is make them move their feet really fast. Or I'll do this number. And once he gets the sideline hob on, it's going to help out on this. Okay? Now I just do this number. See, this horse just got dropped off for training. It's uh, an unbroke or unstarted horse, depending on what term you use. Okay. And I've only got, really sat on him two times. Okay. Rode him today. We're uh, the first time really riding him. So this is good that we're doing this. And this is an Arabian. His name's Kane. Okay. Once I'm done to that point right there, okay, I can see he's feel comfortable. I can actually hold on to this. Because I got control of the front, I got control of the back. Okay, once I come to a good position here, I just change what I'm doing. I take the lead rope off, okay. I got control of the front end of my horse still. I'm going to flip flop. I'm going to go up the front leg. Okay. Watching the hind. Front to back. Pick it up. Let them know it's there. Okay. Good deal. Now, once again, I'm just going to have them go forward. Good right, boy. I just spinning right here, so good. Now that's some true steps. Good. He knows it's on. He's not really overly panicked. Okay, I got my hand up here for safety. I'm trying to get in my nice safe pocket there. He's doing pretty good. I'm on, now what I'm gonna do is on track behind quarters, just like he was doing. So he's having a little bit more difficulty on this leg. Good. Good. I'm going to help him try to move that leg. Good. And rub him. He ain't doing too bad. He's doing really good there. Okay. Okay, do it go again. Yeah. Good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just kind of sack them out. And once again, you noticed that I'm not going to attract legs on both sides. 
I'm just going to have the side that's got side line on track towards the one that's not in the hind rear. Okay. Good. Just let him know that he can be nice and relaxed. Okay. Good. 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 I'm just playing with him. Good. Now when I do this number, follow the feel. I only do it on the side that's on the hobble. Okay, now you see it's kind of relaxing right there. I'm going to rub them. So what that means is if I have the sideline hobbles on right here, it's going to be the same side that I will play with on fall the field. I won't do their side. I don't want the possibility of him getting all gummed up on that side. Okay, now watch that hind. Good, good. See how I step behind? That was very nice. Okay, so he checks out on that too. So what I'm going to do now is just play with him with my cow whip. Good boy. Good boy. And I might just flutter it over towards him. Okay, and this thing does kind of move like a snake. Good. But if he can get comfortable with this, he'll be fine with a lot of stuff. Unless you got a buzz worm starts buzzing at him. Then that's not okay. Okay? That'd be a rattlesnake case you didn't know what a buzz worm was. Alright, here we go. Good. Okay, I went for soft to loud. For very loud. Okay? I just amped it up. He did fine. So, we are, in my opinion, good to go on that. So what we're going to do next is show you with, uh, with the setup out in the pasture just eating some grass. We're going to do that now. All right, folks, so we're out here in the, the pasture, and it's actually a 100-acre trap. Kind of got my training facility on it, too. And what we're going to do is let old cane uh, graze out here. Now, you'll notice anytime I'm doing hobbling initially, I'm in a nice round pin. Okay, I got nice fluffy uh, soft dirt, and, or I might be in arena because rain is a lot bigger as long as it's fluffy okay dirt so they fall over they don't get all hurt and so forth okay now here it's nature but that's why you did your homework you did your homework inside the round pen to be able to get them out here to graze without them freaking out now in the beginning i'm going to be out here i'm going to make sure that there's no falling down branches logs trees or rocks or anything obstacles that this get caught into this is a pretty flat area i'm going to make sure i stay around the area when I put these on, okay? Because you never know what a horse is up to or what they're going to get themselves into, I can tell you that much. Okay, same thing, come here. I'm going to get that hind leg. He's moving a lot, so what I'll probably do is I might use that rope. place pick it up let them know it's on there now I'm not one to leave a halter or lead rope on so I'm going to take it off yes and we'll just watch him eat let him figure out now this is once again, a principle, it's called worn, worn pressure. They have to figure out mainly by themselves, okay, how to wear a piece of equipment. It doesn't matter if it's a saddle, it doesn't matter if it's a saddle pad, it doesn't matter if it's a set of hobbles, that is called worn pressure, okay? And that's what we're working on today, especially with hobbling. Kane, he's doing pretty good. He just uh, breathed outside release. 
sigh of relief. And that's all there is to it. Easier than making flapjacks, I tell you. I love it. Good stuff. Okay, I just wanted to show how easy it is to uh, catch a horse with sideline hobbles. Uh, they're there to graze. This horse, no problem. But generally, you could just go up and uh, go ahead and take off the sideline hobbles, and that's what we're demonstrating right here. So we have the owner of the horse catching her horse, and then she's going to take the sideline hobbles off. We're going to get a little bit closer so you can see. What she's going to do is she's going to reach down, grab the rope, and bring the hind leg towards the front leg. Just pick it up until the horse picks up the leg, and she's going to set it down. Nice and easy. Now she's going to untake the front hobble. And then she's going to take the back one off. That's all there is to it. Real easy pleasy. How was that? It was easy. <laughs> all right, we'll walk back to the pen. Thank you. All righty, folks. Well, what I'm going to show you is how to do a sideline hobble. Just using a six foot piece of uh, rope right here. Uh, if you're a working cowboy, you can't afford the, uh, afford the other stuff, well, then you could do this in a pinch. Now, this rope here is just an old rock climbing rope. You could pick them up from old rock climbers or throw them away or sell them to your dirt cheap. I like to use them as tie strings uh, for cattle. I also like to use them for this type of work. So, I know how much you get paid, so this will help you out. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a middle of the rope clove hitch. So all I'm going to do is grab the bitter end right here. I'm going to find a place right here. I'm going to create a bite. Then I'm going to create another bite. And all I'm going to do is lock it through like this. Real easy. Like, once again, find middle of the rope. Find the loop, and all I want to do is go over top of each other, not below each other, but over top. And all this is the middle of the rope clove hitch. Then what we're going to do is approach the horse's hind legs, pick it up, and I'm going to play by the clove hitch. And put it right over top of the pasture bone, set the leg down. Now what I'm going to do is just adjust the rope and feed it to right where I need it. Now obviously I'm not doing this to a horse that's struggling, it's already gone for the measures, but then what I do is just tie a bullet. So I'm going to wrap the fingers around my hand, bring a bite through, take my rope, and feed it through. Now what I got is a bowl in here, okay? Now if I got an excess right here, I could just ditch it and see how much I got. So what I'm going to do is just adjust it real quick. And I'm just showing you the mistakes. That way you know how to fix it. So now I can adjust it, adjust it, come through. Adjust it, feed through, draw down. Okay, I got two layers of ropes going around here, so it doesn't burn the pasture bone. Now, once again for the bowling, I am going to wrap my fingers around, reach through the hole, grab, and create a bite pull through. I'm going to grab the running end of the rope that's going back, pinch it, pull towards the front end of the horse, pull it through, it'll slip right down onto itself. So now I have a bowling knot. You can see it right here. There's loop, there's a locker bar. Okay? 
Now what I'm going to do is simply bring the rear foot forward and set it down. A nice comfortable area. Now right here all I'm going to do is do another clove hitch. So make a loop, make another loop. Okay, see how I did that? I just bring it over top. Real simple. Create a loop, create a loop, go over top. I'm just going to pick up the front leg and start with the day. Old cowboy trick there. And I'm just going to place the clove hitch right over top of the hoof. Slowly so building it up bigger and bigger, so it'll go right over top of the hoof. And then I'm just going to bring it back down. I'm going to have the horse step. Good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bowling right here. Have bring the foot forward a little bit. Good. Now towards the high foot, all I'm going to do is create a bite. Now see how much rope I got here? So I can give myself a little bit of slack. Good. Reach through. Now to go to kicking, okay, you're going to have to watch your fingers. So I go through. I try to bend and push a loop through without my fingers getting in the way, okay? So I'm going to feed some more. Now you can see why people always buy their own. Okay, I feed the loop through. See how my fingers aren't caught in there? I don't want to lose a digit. Now I take my rope here from the feed it through, create a bite. Now I just feed it. Boom, I got a bowling. Okay, now I got to adjust my bowling to get my rope through so it's tighter. So I just pull it grab all i'm doing is making small adjustments okay now i got my bowling here okay they're all nice and easy good okay now that is sideline hobble now what i can do i track nine quarters and it's good to go i can take them out the pasture, a flat terrain, we've got no obstacles, so he's going to get caught in. And it's very cheap, it takes a little bit longer to set it up, but I could do this and let them graze where they're going to get. So I just wanted to show you the sideline hobble there. Real easy, one of the benefits is it's cheap, you get a rope anywhere, and you got two lines going around so it spreads out on the pasture bones so are less prone to burn themselves and it all depends what type of rope clearly cons is going to work a uh, good uh, tree line rope yacht rope will work pretty good uh you know that's the type of stuff you want to use don't use nylon nylon is going to burn them so there we go it's just another method for uh my vaqueros my vaqueras my work of cowgirls and cowboys wherever you call yourself this is the way to get it done if you don't have a whole lot of dinero okay i've been there done that I understand. So here's a technique. Hope you like it. Check it out. Okay, I'm approaching. Got to the corner here. So the first thing I do is pick up the hind leg, bring it closer to get myself slack to untie this stuff. And the nice thing about bowling, they are easy to come undone. It's easy to knock that locket bar off. Okay, undo clove hitch. Rub that leg, let it know it's off. Go with the hind leg. Undo the bowling knot. Undo the clove hitch. Middle of the rope clove hitch to be specific. And we are good to go. 
walk forward, he knows it's not on there because I gave him a cue by rubbing his leg. That's my cue installed. There you go, folks. Now you got the solution. <laughs> So what we're going to do is I'm not going to really talk a whole lot. This is Gunner. He's never really done hobbling. He, he just uh, got used to warm pressure for wearing a one leg hobble. Now we're going to go to stage three, which is putting on sideline hobbles. Sideline hobbles are neat. Uh, I've explained uh, the other video, so I'm just going to do it. You can watch all you want with me while I'm working.
Thank you.